Conrad is an electrical electronics engineer turned financial market trader with over 10 years trading experience. He is able to deliver FX trainings to traders in currencies, stocks, futures, and CFDs markets. He has tutored over 20,000 traders in currencies, stocks, and CFDs market through his regular workshops, seminars, and webinars. He is now the head of Forex education programs in a multinational financial brokerage firm covering region of Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Tanzania, ETC. He holds a certificate in financial trading analysis from the University of Essex. Hi, Conrad. Hello, Sylvia. How are you doing? I am very fine. Thank you. Your bio is quite impressive. I, <laughs> wow, 10 years, 10 years in trading. Thank you, Bob. thank you, thank you. Um, I think it's um, it's what I get. I get to hear that, um, but it's um, for me. It is just a process. <laughs> like I don't even get to see that, but mm -hmm. thanks, thanks anyway. But yeah, ten years. Um, you know, sticking to one thing for ten years. Not so many have that willpower to do that. Yeah. Just tell us how you got started into your trading journey. All right. Um, I started way back when I was in school, my final year in school, and um, I wasn't it like I told you, uh, engineering program, an electrical electronics engineering program back then. You know, doing some very funny engineering um, uh, courses and all. Uh, but I figured out that um, I didn't have a love and passion to pursue engineering right from when I was in school, thankfully for me. Um, so when I left, I decided to uh, go around and search for, I've always loved the stock market, but I've never had a chance to uh, to join. So I got uh, a place where I could learn how to trade FX. It was just like an advert. You know, somebody put up an advert um, back in those years, in the late night somewhere in uh, Lagos, and um, I said, okay, let me try it. But it was pretty expensive then. As a student, I couldn't afford the training fee. So I met the trainer and tried to explain my situation, that I was a student and all. And to cut the long story short, he decided to train me and not just train me, but also to to be like a mentor, like a guide for me. I think I, uh, maybe because I learned from, it was the first person I learned from, and I saw him physically, and he, he, I stayed some days going, coming around his place. So I saw him, uh, I, I, I saw the discipline in him. Probably because of that, I, I, I think I took off on the right path, on the right note. So. Uh, back then, those years, he was a very disciplined guy who who was focused on this trading alone. So, after then, that was how my journey began. I started putting in more knowledge, putting in more knowledge, and then I had initial success. Success stories of beginners are always very um, very sweet. And then, after the beginners' luck went off. I had some some lots of experiences in trading, and I figured out that look, I am at the standstill right now. I do not know why I'm losing, or neither do I know why I'm making profit. So it's as if there's a knowledge gap. So I kept everything I've known, and I decided to go for more knowledge, and um, got online, got some courses here and there, you know. It wasn't really a formal education. It wasn't really a formal training. It was just some um, pick some knowledge here, pick some knowledge here. And um, I told myself I was going to keep learning, whether I'm learning um, junks or I'm learning the right stuff. I just keep learning and testing. I keep learning and testing. I discovered earlier that I can't get a formal institution to teach, teach me about trading. So the best I could get is to get someone who is practicing trading and then ask the person to help me or to mentor me or to teach me, you know. So um, I got one or two programs more and I keep 
studying even up till now i still keep um learning i believe in learning a lot i believe in um improving myself you know so i didn't even know that 10 years has gone <laughs> You know, but I've never for one of those years, I've never for one of those years deviated from trading. I've never, like, a lot of um, my contemporaries, a lot of my, my, my colleagues have done where after, like, two years, it didn't, they didn't seem to be making profit. They dumped it and they went to some other ventures. And um, then, then after a while, they discovered that, too. They had uh, an initial love for Forex, and then they came back again. I never for once dropped it, even when I had terrible times. I stood there, you know, so uh, I think I really love to do it, and that's that's what brought me to where I am today. I just see the love for for the work, and um, and that's what driving me to to do and um, achieve some of the successes um, that I have um, been able to achieve at this point in my time and career. Okay, so like, can we break down the learning process a bit? Because I find that when you start with a mentor, sort of, or you have someone who's coaching you, and then they let you go by yourself, you can get, um, especially on the internet, when you're doing your own research, you can get a lot of information overload. How do you manage to know what is right and what is practical in your trading? without a mentor because not so many people can afford a mentor. I think I had a maybe I, I've been asking myself the same question funny enough. I think maybe because I had a background in in electrical engineering mm-hmm. where we yeah, where we synthesize where we synthesize and analyze a lot. So um it makes me to be critical. It makes me to to be critical in my thinking. It makes me to um, to put to put things into context. So when I'm learning, when I'm when when I when I pick up a book and I pick up a course online or pick up anything online, I want to understand the structure of the course. I want to understand the structure of the book first. You know, so once I understand where the book is or the course is heading, I could be able to tell if I need it at this time or I just need to pick one or two things and then go off. I remember taking a, a, a full course just because I wanted to learn um, uh, uh, risk of ruin and uh, under risk management. I wanted to learn some aspect of risk management. I took a full course of forex trading, and then I've, I've done that over time. So once I just look at the course, I just know. Um, I just analyze the content. The I uh, put it into a format and said, okay, I think I understand the direction of this course, but then I need this part. So maybe it's my background. In 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 in, a, in an engineering field where where um, we, we we try to um, put things in order, try to analyze things and and then break down problems, we try to break down problems and then and, and and find steps from the problem to find steps to the solution. So and I I, see, I think I approach the market to to the same way, you know. So maybe that's what that's what has helped me not to pick up so many because I have a volume of books in my in my library online in my in my laptop and I don't even get to read all of them but I, I seem to be picking up the right material and the right content and, and, and I and I and I um and again experience experience I would say experience helps me in the sense that um having gone through junks of uh, of, of programs and courses online and and books online I've learned to to know uh, what to look for. I've learned to know what what is relevant, and I and I I spend time to 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 to, to test things um, before I use them. So I, I think um, experience and my background in engineering contributed to me not being overloaded with with um, um, my array of information online. Okay. Um, you know, I like the fact that you said that you had to take a full course to study risk management. Is that the certificate in financial trading analysis? Is is that the one? <laughs> financial trading analysis course. Uh, it's not. It's just part of those courses that I took. Yeah, you're right. It's part of those courses that I took. Uh, a full length course, um, just to 
just to pick one or two things. Um, that's that program. That program is just one of it. There are other programs online that I have to attend the full. Sign up for the full course just because of a particular module. You know, financial training, um, the certification I had in financial training analysis is um, from University of Essex. It was a program they're doing for four months, and then they're supposed to teach you technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and all. And I've already learned all that, and um, but because I already signed up for it, and I I didn't have a university um, um, affiliated degree trading so this was that was my first one and I said okay it's a good opportunity for me to have it on my profile you know even yeah. though even though the contents were not um, new to me so I had to go through that just because I wanted to have that profile it doesn't mean I didn't learn anything from the program I did learn and I I thank the the um, the, of the program directors and, and the my instructor um, but then I'm just saying that um, it wasn't new. There were, no, there were no new stuff to me, you know. And um, I essentially comp- waited to complete the program because I feel the the, the school brand name is a good one um, to brag of as a trader. Okay. But, so now, given your ten levels of trading experience, um, you know, ten years of trading experience, rather, what can you say are the rules that you you don't compromise on when you're trading? Uh, I have um, a lot of rules and then I think for me once I'm able to I go through a nine a nine step the nine step process nine nine steps okay. I, I, I call them steps because one leads to the other you know and um, um this is what I apply to all financial assets that I trade. You know, so this is how it goes. I first of all start with the observation of the charts because I, I'm I'm hundred percent technical um based. Okay. So, yeah. so I first of all observe the charts technically using a lot of technical tools and ideas and, and all. And then I do a quick test as a second step. I do a quick test to see if this works. On a very short uh, period, maybe say one month, two months, or three months, and then I, I I I fully develop the strategy. I develop every 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 aspect of the strategy, every pillar of the strategy, and then I go into back testing the strategy, and I come back test for now a longer period of time, maybe like five years, or or, or four years or three years, depending on the time frame I'm I'm back testing for. And then once I'm done, then I start looking at the risk management model, model to use. I look at the, what type of model will work faster here or better here or safer here. Should I use a fixed a fixed lot size model or should I use a fixed percentage model or should I use a, a fractional risk model or should I use a fixed dollar model? There are different type of models I could use to depending on the strategy that will make you um, stay uh, above uh, water at the end of the day then after that I optimize the strategy and I add I add back some of those uh, risk model and other other parameters you know to 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 make it robust to make the strategy robust and and stay for a long time then I do a fall mm-hmm. test now so fall testing involves me putting it on a demo account and I put it demo I put it on demo account I usually have a rule I put on demo account for a minimum of six months. So um, once it has gone through a demo account for six months, then I can bring the demo account down and analyze the results of the demo account and mm-hmm. see if this is what putting my money in. And then once once I've once I've done that, then I can put in my put it in my um, live accounts. So once I go through this nine step process above, I I I can say that I cast the strategy. And the risk management rules, I cast them in stones. I cast them in stones. When I start to trade live accounts, I I do not even change a single parameter of my back of my of, of the strategy. I, I I stamp them, I put it up in in stone. It can never be changed. I don't compromise on on that. But if you have, if it if, so if it has gone through the nine process, 
of my of my strategy development st- uh, 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 procedures, then I have to stick with it. I have to stick with it for a minimum of three years before I can scrap that strategy. I see. I see. Yeah, if it means um, no. Okay. Um, is that like the the you know one of your mantras in trading that once you start with it, you run with it until you give it some you know time and what from, from what I'm hearing is that you're more long term oriented you know you're not short term oriented no, no. in trading no no I'm never short term I'm, I'm I I give my strategies a minimum of three years on the live account whether mm. they are whether they are making profits or they are making losses I make them stay for three years after they've gone through that nine step process mm-hmm. and so I have to keep them for three years, and um, if if after three years if if they are still profitable, fine. But after three years, if they are not profitable, then I can pull them down. But I won't pull them down within the three years period because I've already done the back test and all that, and I know the maximum that I'm expecting, maximum loss expectation. Uh, my risk management model must be such that I cannot lose my accounts my equity to a certain size, you know, mm-hmm. so it's not all, yeah, so the, all the stuff would have already been put in place in my, in my strategy development stage. So okay. it's a long time. So Conrad, to you, trading is more of a, um, it's like more of investing than, you know, trading so you can earn, you know, your returns every month to service your bills, for example. Because if you can hold for three years, then that means it's not, um, um, what can I say? You you don't entirely rely on, on the trading bit of it to sort your financial needs at the present moment. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. That is right. Yeah. And uh, okay. I, that, that's, what I, that's what I believe uh, because this is the reason. Because number one, um, I'm build, I, I'm building an account size. I'm not I'm not trading to deplete my account every month. I'm building it. So even though if I make um ten percent in the month, in the particular month, I'm not gonna withdraw that and start all over the next month. I build it. And I, I and I I've already I've I have already um I've already taught myself how to live my life on the long term. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have to depend on money coming in for me every month. So I have a good budgeting, personal budgeting um, skill, and then I can live on a fund that is in my account. For, I can live on a fund that is in my bank account for like, for like mm. a whole year, for like one year. I would have to have a need to touch my trading account. So mm. this is, these are the personal skills that I'm, I've learned to help me sustain my trading. You know, so I don't have to depend on my trading account every month or, or, or in the short term to be able to sustain me. So, okay, that, that really takes a lot of discipline because, you know, so many people come and to me and, you know, even to, um, you know, other people and they think that, you know, they can automatically start trading and in under a year they can, you know, quit their jobs and, you know, start making this huge bucks that, you know, they will just, um, you know, live on. And uh, I think the most important thing that I'm learning from you is that, you know, it's uh, it, it takes a lot of process and a lot of time and a lot of discipline to actually get to that level. So, um, yeah, you can maybe uh, give us an example of a recent trade and not giving away your strategy by all means, you know, and explain to us your idea generation process, how you, you know, ex- enter the markets, how you execute, how you exit, and that process, uh, you know, you said that you trade in currencies, stocks, futures, CFDs, you know, all the financial um assets you can just take one example of a recent trade that has been good to you and then break that down for us a little bit (laughs) okay all right (laughs) okay um 
uh, let me see um last year for example if you uh-huh. if you check on my linkedin profile my linkedin post i i made a post in january last year about bitcoin and um um uh, unfortunately fortunately or so unfortunately um i would say fortunately for me but unfortunately for a lot of people um was that um at that time in january 2018 bitcoin was at the at this rising uh, part it was it was it was still it was still it was still rising it was still going up for it's been going on for for months before then and and current and that time it was about um um thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars there about about thirteen thousand eight hundred in January and it had gone it had gone up to as high as nineteen and so and then was coming down but then the, there was this uh, projection by a lot of people that it was going to go higher again from that thirteen thousand seven hundred or eight hundred there about and um when I looked at it using my um technical uh, um, strategy that I I often deploy on um, long term instrument like um, gold, like um, uh, crude oil. I I saw that um, I saw this staggering thing that Bitcoin was going to fall. So so that I don't so that I I so that um I, um I wouldn't be seen like I was lying. <laughs> So I told I went on on my LinkedIn, my social media, and I posted it there that um, LinkedIn is presently at thirteen thousand Bitcoin. No, I'm sorry, Bitcoin is presently at thirteen thousand um, um, five hundred, and I I am thinking that it might fall down to five thousand below five thousand dollars, five thousand plus dollars, and uh, this is my reason. I put up my chart there. I used um at that time I used um there was um um a descending triangle. I'm sure you know that in technical analysis. Yeah. 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 So there was a descending triangle that formed and for those technical savvy traders I put it up there for my students as well. Some of them called me up immediately after and, and I told them this is um long term. So I was even thinking it would take it one year to get down to five thousand dollars. So I put everything out there. It's there for the whole world to see. So, so they call me the guy that predicted Bitcoin fall. <laughs> so what happened was um, I went to my chat and then I also wanted to take advantage of that fall. So I um, I set my trade based on that um, technical tool, which is um, the descending triangle, because I believe a lot in chart patterns as well. And when it fell, in less than three months, from J- January to March, Bitcoin fell consistently to below five thousand, to below five thousand six hundred dollars. You know, so from thirteen thousand eight hundred to five thousand six hundred, it yeah. fell about eight thousand, eight thousand dollars. And I made, I made a very good amount of money that I was projecting I would make in the whole year. Um, because of the large and um, the quantity of volume I used, I made it in, in three months. You know, so um, that was um, a, a very recent huge success that I had. Uh, one of the um, um, trades that I had last year. The, the, the rest are more short term. When I trade currencies, I trade them in a very short term, two weeks, um, one week, two weeks, one week, or maximum. You know, but when I have um, 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 when I have um, topical Topical assets like um, um, Bitcoin, like um, gold in, in 2013, um, 2012, 2013, when I have this kind of um, um, asset, gold oil as well, when I have this kind of assets and um, it's in the media, I, I get interested in it because I know that media media media, media has helped to do a lot of things. Um, it, it, it gives it gives market false value. You know, so 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 when when I heard when I knew when I saw that the 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 Bitcoin was being pushed up by media uh, and a lot of um, uh, releases, press releases and all that in the media, I got more interested in Bitcoin. And uh, when it was about to crash, I knew because of the media uh, um, uh, boost that it had, um, it might likely do a big fall, like just like the gold too. 
you know and another one that happened last year for me because last year is just about two months ago so i can remember this very clearly and that what happened for me last year was um amazon 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 had um i made i made i was a, i was profitable on amazon stocks mm-hmm. uh in two in two seasons um in two in two um uh um, um, season. Let me put it that way. And the first one was when, it, in January, from January to about um, April or May, Amazon was rising. I remember, I remember purchasing um, some of my Amazon stocks at around uh, one thousand two hundred, one thousand five hundred, or about. And then uh, I saw it moved up to about two thousand dollars per share. And uh, before the year ran out, in fact, at the mid mid of the year, before the mid of the year, um, it, it fell again, and I also saw it, you know. So I took a position on that as well, long term. So Amazon was being pushed by media to that point. So when when it's stock when it's stock on assets gets into the media, um, I naturally like to stay away from that that kind of stock or that kind of asset. But then I like to treat the I like to treat the the, the the outcome of it because um, um, it's it's usually very catastrophic or sometimes very um, uh, so and and that that gives a lot of profits in the long term so that's one of my um, uh, that, that one of my strat- one of my one of my strategies but that's not my regular strategy my regular strategy is based solely on um, H4 time frame and um, um, that is that takes about two weeks, sometimes a week, for the trade to to um, um, to max out. So so that's uh, those are more frequent trades that I that I that I just, okay. I just yeah. Okay, so you said that you're technically oriented. Let's get a bit into the you know the technical aspect side of it, and so. Are you? Can you say you're a reactive trader? Like you give time to observe the markets, and then you act based on what you're seeing from the markets. Yeah, I think I I prefer that. Uh, the reason why I prefer to be reactive, especially um, not to preempt the direction of the uh-huh. market, is uh-huh. because is because um, I. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to see myself as a, as a, as a future teller, as a fortune teller, as a soothsayer. I don't want to see myself as a, as a, as a, as a market um, a wizard or whatever. I, 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 I don't like to do that. I, I like to let the market, let the market lead me. So I like to, because I feel that. Um, 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 it's it's a bit safer when you when you when you trade in the trend. It's a bit safer when you trade in the trend than when you try to preempt the trend. Um, and you know the saying of um, the trend is your friend and all. You know, so I I and 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 I've always believed based on my 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 trading experience and. Uh, my strategy development experience. I've always believed that when you understand the context of a trend, we understand. Um, maybe I will get to talk about it later. If um, if you if you if you ask me the question of um, how I evaluate my trade, I'll be able to explain it. But if that's not a question. But then I, I like to be. I like to just follow the trend rather than preempt the direction of the market. You know. So. Um, because there's a process to I follow uh, okay. when, I'm, when I'm analyzing a particular trade, a good setup, for example. Okay. And uh, briefly explain your risk management tools, you know, the ones that you must use. Risk management, risk management, risk management. Risk management is something I've recently fallen in love with. It's just a recent thing started about three years ago after after taking one or two courses and and, and, and materials I read some materials on risk management I fell in love completely with risk management and now I've, I've done a lot of research in, in, in risk management 
have gone very further um, because I, 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 and and what helped me to 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 first of all love risk management was because I started programming um, trading strategies, and then that helped me to become more analytical in my strategy. So when I tweak a risk management model, it it interests me how it's very interesting how the results would change drastically. So the a strategy that is supposed to give you 50% ROI, and when it's tweaked, when the risk management, not the strategy itself, when the risk management is tweaked, you know, it's, it gives me more results, it gives me more profit, or probably gives you less profit. And you could even use a certain risk management that would destroy the account. It won't give you the profit, but the, the, the strategy will be fine, but the certain way you manage the risk might even destroy the account. So I got very interested in risk management. And now, um, let me just make it shorter. There are different risk management models that I use, especially the um, fixed percentage risk model, which is the one I have come to love. Fixed percentage risk model makes me risk is a fixed percentage of my account size, a fixed percentage of my account size for every single trade that I take. So, so if I say I'm risking one percent, one percent of my account size on on, on 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 this strategy, it means every time I'm taking this trade based on that strategy, I'm going to risk just one percent of my account size. So this is my this is this is this is my best risk management um, model, and that I call it um <laughs> I call, although this is this is not professional though, but I call it crash proof. Crash proof risk management model. Crash proof because I call it crash proof because mathematically it is difficult for you to deplete an account to zero if you if you discount it with a fixed percentage. It's difficult if you, if you if you pick an account size say maybe hundred thousand dollars for example, and then you you try to deplete that account by one percent. You try to you try to discount it by one percent. It would it would be very difficult to get to zero. No matter the account size, so um, I figured out. Okay, this is this is interesting. You know, this is mathematics, purely mathematic mathematical trick in in trading. So that's why I love it so much. So irrespective of the strategy, um, the risk fixed percentage risk is something I've come to love in most of my trading strategies. So, um, yeah. So I think that answers that question, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. So tell us now. Let's dive out a little bit. Tell us. Um, you know, when you really have those good trades, uh, like the one you mentioned about Bitcoin and Amazon, you know, when you have those good trades, how do you balance your emotions when, you know, when you're doing really well and also on the flip side, when you're not doing so well? Um, I, 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 uh, honestly speaking, um, trading for me is, is like a game. Trading for me, it's like um, it's a game of probabilities. So um, whether I'm in profit or I'm in loss, it's all probabilities. It's all statistics because I've done back test upon back test upon back test, and I've seen it from my results that no single trade is so much of importance. No single trade, whether it ends in a loss or it ends in profit, if you pull out that particular trade. Over a long period of time, it it is is irrelevant, is insignificant. So 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 it shouldn't draw an additional attention. So whether 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 I'm in, in I'm in huge profit or I'm in huge loss, I don't make any decision based on that. It doesn't even it doesn't even affect my emotion, because I, um um I I I I have to look at it in 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 probabilities of in 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 a, um, it, it, this could be uh, either positive or negative, positive or negative, but over yeah. a long period. Over a long period of time, uh, I'm supposed to be above um, uh, above above water. So, um, no single outcome really gets uh, um, uh, attention. Get my attention uh, because uh, this is just money. But this is just money. This is just numbers. This is just numbers. My my funny enough, funny enough. Uh, 
this might be strange, but to me, the part I love the most in all my trading, 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 trading process, mm-hmm. from, from the time I, I analyze the market to the time I place the trade, and to the time profits or losses being hit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The part that really gets my emotion and my 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 joy that gives me that gives me atten- much atten- that draws my attention that makes me a little emotional. Either I'm happy, I'm excited. Is actual is actually the analysis part. So 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 I love the analysis part. I love when I'm analyzing the chart. That's 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 the part that I, that intrigues me the most. The most not even when I place a trade, because. <laughs> I don't get emotional about it. Not even when it hits profit or loss, because I already, I already concluded and I knew. Um, at most times I know the the exact loss I'm gonna hit, and I know the exact profit I'm gonna get. So it's not new emotion. But when I'm when when I, when, when I when I get a new setup, and I, I'm I'm analyzing it, it draws a lot of um uh, 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 um it draws a lot of emotions from me. It draws um, even sometimes I uh I I could even I could even um. I could even uh, get excited. Sometimes I could, I could, I could, um, um, I could get emotional. But that's the, is the process part that I that I get emotional yeah. about, not not yeah. the ending part, the results. Okay, so you know exactly where to exit before you even you know place an a, a, a trade. That's what you're saying from this. Yeah. And, exactly. Uh, okay, and that what's more important to you is the analysis bit that's what that is what gets your juices up and you know yeah. your mind go wild and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, not the outcome not the money bit of it okay yeah. it's really yeah. important okay so now how do you evaluate a good trade and what would you classify as a good trade okay um a good trade is a trade that has three golden rules met or three golden questions answered three golden questions these questions um, can be um, up, can be can be uh, extended you can apply it you know so number one it must identify trend of the market a setup must tell you must you must you must answer the question of what is the trend because because if you don't if you if you don't trade like I told you earlier I, I I'm I'm a trend based trader I don't I'm not uh, I'm reactive I'm not um, uh, I'm not I don't preempt the market so I feel that every trade setup should have a context there should be a context where the trade is, setup is being gotten like if you see it, uh, a descending pattern if you see if you see a bearish pattern for example a, a bearish chart pattern. Um, the, the context must be that the market is in, in a downward trend. So if, if, if you see a bearish pattern in an upward trend, the probability that the, the market will go down is low, is small. Yes, yes. So, so you must get the context right. So the, the, your setup must be able to uh, address or answer the question of you knowing the direction of the market first. So once, you, once, once your setup um, um, work was was a setup um, is based on the context of the market. I think is a good setup. That's number one. The number two, your setup must have clearly defined entry rule. Clearly defined. Clearly defined. It must be a rule that cannot change. It mustn't be discretional. It must be something you say, okay, and perhaps if it gets there, perhaps if it gets there, it must be. But your entry rule must be clear, and and that should have that should have been known from your from your back test and and your result analysis, you know, while you're trying to yeah. So and then third one is exit rule. Your mm-hmm. your your good setup must be able to tell you when exactly you're going out. You must know when you're going out. You must know while you're setting up the trade. So these are the three um golden questions that a good setup when he has it, when he has this three then I can call it a very good setup. But if it doesn't have any of, if it doesn't have, if it misses one of these three, um, it's not a good setup for me. So I. Okay. okay. So regardless of whether that trade turns out profitably, as long as that trade has followed the three golden rules, then it's a good trade, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, how do you statistically track and evaluate your performance over time? 
and has that process improved your trading yeah yeah like I, um, it's it's really improved it has improved my trading um like i said earlier about um the nine process that i follow mm -hmm. strategy, strategy development there's a part where i do uh after my demo trading or forward, or forward test or probably after my live trading i do uh result analysis and one of the website that I use, one of the analytical tool that I use is um, FX Blue. I think fxblue.com. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, FX Blue. And sometimes I use my FX book. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a popular one. So those two websites, I've, um, I just, lo I mean, um, attach my accounts, um, did my account to, to those websites, and then they publish. Um, produce for me a lot of um, results and a lot of analysis that I can view and and um, a lot of um, parameters of my results so um, these are the tools that I use and um, because I, I like to see in, um, so many things especially the success rate of my strategy I like to see stretch uh, draw down so that these are key parameters for me and I like to see probability of loss how many mm -hmm. trades how many trades would I take with this strategy before it crashes the account? What's the what's the probability? You know, some of the parameters I like to check from this um, analytical tools. So success rate is good, and and and, and uh, I also want to see the drawdown, absolute drawdown, relative drawdown, and um, some other factors like sharp ratio and uh, yeah. um, relative uh, um, um, standard deviation. You know, and um, so many, so many, some other ones. And I also want to see the, I also want to see the the summary of my trades. I want to see which of the the pairs, which of the pairs have have done more profit for me, and um, that helps me a lot. So, uh, the, the you know, I'm tempted to go back to. Forgive me, but I I also fell in love with risk management, and for me the true measure of you know how successful you are as a trader is how you manage to control and manage your drawdown levels. Yeah. So let's you know for the purpose of you know giving more information out there that can help someone, let's you know tell us a bit about drawdown levels and how you use that as a risk management tool to you know track your performance okay now the um, um it's it's just like a cause and effect mm -hmm. a, a, um you know in 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 medicine there's a there's a, an aspect of medical science that that deals with um um, um the cost the, um, the the causative um uh part of a disease and they try to they try to prevent it rather sorry they, they do preventive medicine they try to prevent uh, uh, an, uh, uh, a disease and then there's an uh, there's an aspect of medicine that um, tries to solve um, 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 problem they try to solve sickness um, um, disease and all so I see drawdown as as an effect and not as a cause so mm -hmm. so so drawdown is something that that um, will show up at the end of your trade but then you you can't um, you can't um, you can't you can't you can't tweak it you can't change your drawdown you can't control it directly yeah so, yeah. yeah so 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 what I do is um, for me to have the drawdown that I like which is uh, I, I I like very small drawdown of I'll, course <laughs> <laughs> so I I prefer an account to have um, to have um, um, Five percent drawdown and have um, twenty percent return on investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five maybe no two percent drawdown and twenty percent uh, return. Is that drawdown. per annum or like what? Per what annum? duration? Per okay, annum. that's yeah. that's per annum. Yeah, twenty percent. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, so let's say twenty percent per annum and um, two percent drawdown. I prefer an account to have that with good equity curve. Than having 100% um, uh, return on investment and 35% uh, drawdown. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I prefer the small drawdown, and then I try to increase the, the 
profit. So let me go, let me go back to what I was trying to say. So, um, so drawdown is an uh, is a 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 is an effect of a cost. So what is the cost of huge drawdown? Number one, the, the risk you take percentage part. Um, like I said, I use fixed percentage risk. When I increase my fixed percentage risk, I have at the end of the trading period, I get a large drawdown most times. So I reduce my fixed percentage risk to give me a certain drawdown. So if I want maybe I want um, 10% drawdown, I can I could I could in, in the year in the whole year I could re I could reduce my percentage risk to about one percent, and um, that means that I take percent one percent risk per trade, one percent risk of my capital per trade. If I do that consistently for one year, I might I might end up getting 10% um, drawdown. So if if I if I wanted twenty percent drawdown, I could increase that to two percent risk per trade. So this is how I control drawdown because drawdown cannot be controlled directly. So um, um, I have to control it from from the and uh, from the beginning from the from the when yeah. you take the trades. Yeah. So okay. Okay, that's a, that's a good answer. Now um, let's get a bit personal. Uh, can you say you have a trading philosophy, your view about the markets and uh, how they operate, how the market operates? And um, is that, do you, if, if you have that trading philosophy, is it, uh, you know, does it affect your trading style and is it a reflection of your personality? Yeah, there are two questions there. <laughs> okay, let me talk about the the trading um, uh, philosophy okay. that, I, that I uphold. Everything is probability. Nothing is sure. Nothing is certain in this market. So you can't say, uh, for sure I'm going to make 10% in a year. For sure I'm going to make 100% in a year. You know, it's all probability. So when I know that is a probability, what do I do? I have to put all the odds in my favor. I have to I have to I have to make sure that I I I stay near um, um, the point where I could get a high probability of success. So what does that mean for me? That means I'm not going to preempt the market. That means I'm going to go with my trend. That means I'm going to go in the context of a trend. So that means I'm going to do a lot of back test on my strategy. That means I'm going to have a lot of um, data to analyze my results. So I do stuff to put the probability in my favor, to put the odds in my favor. So this is this is what I believe about because everything is, for me, it's probability. So it it's, it sounds very funny for me when uh, I hear someone say, um, "I'm gonna make ten percent every month," and I'm like, "Oh, really?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, for me, it's probability. You could make the ten percent. You might make more, you might make less, but what is important is that don't focus. Don't focus on the results. Don't focus on the scoreboard. It's just like a game, like you're playing a football game. You don't, you don't, you don't put your fix your eyes on the scoreboard. You you put your eyes on the match. If you play a good match, you're gonna get yeah. a good result. But if you put your eyes on the on the on the result, you're bothered about it. You're emotional about it. You would you would be distracted from playing a good match. You know so. Um, and the the match itself is probability. You could play a very wonderful match and then you lose the game still. So you just you just have to do all, all the way. You just have to. I mean, anyway, you have to still play a good match. So same thing I see trading. You have to try do your do your best. And if it comes out positive, fine. If it comes out negative, fine. But you have to do your best. You have to put in. You know, you know, stick to your rules and make sure your rules don't just stick to a rule that you have not tested because I hear that, I hear that a lot that okay stick to the rule what if your rule is, is not a good rule so you have to test it that's why I believe in back testing a lot I do a lot of research in trading um, I think about about 45% of my time my trading time is spent on research 45% is spent on, on, on research, about um, um, the rest of it is spent on analyzing the markets, placing the trades, and other things I do. But in my trading time in, in every day, in every week, 
more in June every month. I saw that I spent 45% of it in researching new strategies, back testing them, optimizing them, fixing risk model on them, uh, and all that. So I keep doing that consistently because I'm um, now you the, the question of um uh how they shape my trading style if if I if I have a uh, um a philosophy a philosophy yeah um the reason why I spend forty five percent of my time on, on developing strategies is because I wanna have a lot of them. I wanna have um uh I want to diversify. I diversify on that three three things. I diversify my risk. I try to diversify my risk. So um if I use um um two percent risk on a certain account, I could use one percent risk on another type of account. I could use five percent risk on a type of account. Or probably on a strategy. I diversify my strategy as well. So I don't want to have just one strategy. That's why I have a strategy that I use for for long term uh, assets, uh, topical assets like uh, assets in the media, like the Bitcoin case, the Amazon case, gold case, crude oil cases, and so I have different strategies, and I have a strategy, that, um, and, and I like to build more strategies so I can diversify across strategies, and I diversify totally across assets. So when I have so many strategies on GPUSD, I don't like to have another strategy on GPUSD. I like to think of another strategy that could work in another type kind of asset. So so this is my um my style. This is uh my personal style uh, and um, that's how I approach. approach okay. It. Okay. So I think we've done a good job in you know uh in this, this interview. You know and in conclusion what would I know you you very active in education yeah. um yeah so why is education very important for you to beginning traders as well as to even you know people who have like five six years in trading experience why is education so important for you oh that's a good question um i've been i've been training i've been teaching um, traders for the past um, five years actually for the more than that for the past for yeah, I think six years you know and for me I've seen a whole lot of traders I've I've, I've tutored about 20,000 traders about 20,000 traders I've seen a whole lot of types of traders and personality and those who, who have traded for even more than more than 10 years those who have traded for for more than 10 years they come from my they come for our training programs and I, I get to talk with them I get to um, 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 see how things are faring for them in the trading and this has made me to know that um, uh, for some reason those guys who have been successful in trading who have been consistently successful in trading they they seem to have ongoing tr education for them they seem to have ongoing knowledge improvement it is very I've, I've, I've not found I've not I mean I don't see I don't I don't, I've not seen so many traders who don't have continuous development in their in their in their knowledge um, be successful or I've not seen traders who are successful who don't have recent improvement yeah. in, in their knowledge because even even the even the even the um, the assets the, some of the assets have been introduced newly, and some of them require different trading styles, which you have to you have to learn if you are not using them. Yeah. You know, yeah. And um, so this will require that you have to keep improving yourself. To me, uh, the more I know, the better I get. You know, so yeah. from, from learning technical analysis, I learned risk management, I learned algo trading. Now I do a lot of algo trading. You know, so. This all this helped me to improve my trade trade execution, you know. So uh, with every every level of knowledge that I I I, I learn, I get better. And so that's okay. why I think trading um, knowledge is very critical to being successful in trading. I think you also have a heart for people because then you wouldn't be teaching. Yeah. I mean, 
<laughs> not everyone does. Not everyone has the patience to impart knowledge on someone, especially to someone who's relatively new to trading. So, you know, good work on that. And uh, just to emphasize, you know, on that point, Robin Sharma has this, um, he calls it LSG. You know, every day you have to do something to learn, you have to study, and you have to grow. So I also believe that for you to be a very good trader, and a great trader, not a good trader, you know, you have to keep reinventing your knowledge and your skills, and you, you're doing a good job, Conrad. So good work on that. I think we've come to the end of the interview. You're going to give me your LinkedIn or the, the social media link that you prefer for yeah. me to link to the interview. Okay. All right. I'll give you my LinkedIn because then we get to see the um, uh, the Bitcoin I talked about. Yeah. yeah. And some of the older setups that I posted on my LinkedIn. All right. So cheers. You have a good day. Keep doing what you're doing in Tanzania. I hope you get, you know, good students there. And <laughs> when, you, when you go back to Nigeria, pass my regards to, you know, the team and all of them. All right. So thank you so much. And you too. I love what you're doing. I I, I will always be available. Um, then I'll try to um, um, be supportive as well. So just keep doing it and um, you inspire a lot of people. And I see your work as well. And I read some of your interviews and um, I listen to them. And I, I read your book, your recent book, it was great, wonderful. I, I, I never get to thank, um, thank you personally for that. So um, keep it up, keep it up. Thank, thank you so much. You. Okay, right. have a good day. Cheers. Bye. Okay. Bye. Yeah.